Today, I'm going to start by introducing to you uh, a person called Amar. Amar is uh, young in spirit. He plays golf, and, um, and he lives in Hawaii. He has something in common with a person that um, lives in California and uh, is called uh, Tamara. And uh, Tamara is also very active, young. And she has something in common as well with Amanda here that uh, comes from Aspen, Colorado. And uh, at the same time, very similar commonalities with Jason, very active water sporter, as well as Sarah here that uh, uh, is uh, active in uh, sport as well. What they all have in common, all of them, though, is something different. And that is, they, are, they all, at some point in time in their life, sustained the spinal cord injury and are all in wheelchairs. And um, at some point in time in their recovery, they uh, did have a meeting with their re rehabilitation team, and they asked the question, will I ever be able to walk again? And the answer they got was no. Such a simple answer, two letters, to such an impactful question. Something that is so basic to all of us, we even learn it before we talk. Basically, in the prime of their life, they are deprived of this basic need. Well, back in Berkeley, where my company is, we are <coughs> determined to change that no into a yes, and, uh, and we are working on that. With the help of technology, um, with innovation, incredible brain power that we have there among engineers that have not only a science degree in engineering, but they also understand the biomechanics of the body and how to apply robotics to the body because making a robot in itself is difficult enough. To, but to add that to the body and put it on like a pair of jeans is a whole another level. So I'm pleased to say that we are very close to introducing now into rehabilitation centers this year called EXO. It is a wearable robot that um, takes very little effort to put on. Uh, we like to call it an uh, exoskeleton. And uh, it's really, in a way, a revolution, because it is a similar way, a revolution like we had with motor cars, when they changed from horse and buggy, or when bicycles got the motor and became motorcycles. What we are here doing, really, is taking a simple orthotic device passive that really never have worked, has worked for people who are in wheelchairs, and we are adding, we are giving it the power. And so it's transforming into a whole new category. To help me better illustrate this, I want to introduce another person to the States. That's uh, Paul, and he comes uh, originally from Alaska. And he is um, going to demonstrate to us um, EXO. So, Paul, are you ready? Absolutely. 
Perfect. <laughs> So what you have here, just let me describe it a little bit, is we have uh, four motors. Um, they basically are repl replicating the hips and the knees. It has 15 sensors in it all together. In addition to that, um, <clears throat> we are talking about the computer here. It's really the brain of the machine that's sit sitting in between uh, batteries that are here on both sides. This does actually, and how it works is, uh, you, we have uh, Katharina Strausser here uh, in the back. She is uh, one of the brainchild behind EXO uh, from UC Berkeley originally, and uh, now with uh, our company. And uh, what she is holding right now is a remote control, and that is something that in the beginning will be used in therapy in the first, as you are taking your first steps. So the physical therapist will actually work with that, and then, as, uh, and Paul has already transferred to that stage, is that uh, he can initiate the steps himself through the crutches. So um, we don't have that here. That's going to be available in about six months. And uh, through the crutches, he can uh, drive uh, the opposite leg forward. But now um, Katie is uh, simply going to um, initiate the steps. And uh, the way we try to design it is that to make it very natural as possible. Uh, that is important, especially as people <coughs> are trying to uh, relearn again, because if you are incomplete spinal cord injured, then uh, you, you might have the chance to actually gain back uh, the walking, and you want to make sure people learn that in a natural way. So, uh, so Paul, are you taller than me? What is, what is I, 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 a little bit, it looks like, yeah. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you at least look much more powerful than I do. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, let me ask you, uh, how, how often have you now been in EXO? Uh, how many, many uh, times? I would say this is probably my sixth or seventh time in the unit. I, maybe, how does it feel? I, well, considering that I'm at TED Med in front of all of you fabulous people, <laughs> and I just walked across the stage and I'm a paraplegic, I can't really be anything but amazing. Right. And as you see on this chart, I mean, our goal is to uh, actually make sure someone like you can take it with uh, EXO home, I mean, how, what, what is it that you would primarily like to do with EXO? You know, it's, it, it's amazing the things that you, you take for granted on a, on a daily basis, and walking is definitely one of them. And I would have to say there's, there's, I mean, I could sit up here all night and tell you the things that I'd like to be able to do again, but, and I apologize, ladies, but I would really like to be able to pee standing up. <laughs> 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 Excellent. I think I move on to the presentation now. <laughs> okay, so um, talking about uh, the future and um, kind of where, what is the next step? Um, this is kind of the last part of uh, our presentation here. Uh, because here we have a revolutionary technology. Uh, it's disruptive in, any, in many ways. It's, a, it's exoskeletons, it's not really something you see every day walking down the road. Um, and secondly, we are getting people to do something, people stepping out of wheelchairs and walk, that uh, <coughs> the wheelchair has been around for 1,500 years as pretty much the only mobility tool for 70 million people around the globe that uh, somehow are dependent on it. So uh, <clears throat> we realized at uh, our company that uh, if we are going to be able to break this uh, habit, um, we need some serious effort here. And it's just not enough to come up with the technology. And especially now in our current economy and uh, 
and the way uh, companies introduce or, or have uh, the success rate of medical device companies, uh, especially here in the U.S., regulatory hurdles, reimbursement, and so on. How are we going to do that? So um, we took the approach of um, collaboration, really radical collaboration, and I'll come to that, but also really diving into going from a typical university project into really diving into, as a small company, understanding um, uh, people's motivations that would be potential users of EXO. And um, <clears throat> we knew that all the odds were against us because how many companies end up in the graveyard pretty much of uh, fantastic technology and commercial success. And um, <clears throat> so our goal was simply to use this insight we would get from collaboration and, and looking deep into this uh, to come up out with a device in two, three years from now that we can take from rehabilitation just like you would do as an amputee. You would walk home with a leg. You would not really leave it behind. And, uh, and that's the path we are on. Uh, we call it a, a journey. And uh, so in terms of the collaboration, we started reaching out to all the leading rehabilitation centers in the US. And now we are expanding that to Europe. And we are not only teaming with uh, the world best in terms of get, tapping into their know-how, but also we are getting users through them. And we are setting up studies, both there's a collaborative study taking place now in, in US, and that's just getting going, and in Europe we are just forming another one. This is all to help us to learn. And, uh, and we really, don't, we really don't, don't need it. This is class one device, just for your information. This is, uh, we don't really need clinical studies, but we think that we just have to have it because this is just so new, and no matter what the regulatory hurdles say, we are still going to do it. And we also teamed up with the design company Ideo, which is kind of unusual of a small startup company out of Berkeley. And uh, <clears throat> Ideo, people have been fantastic. They've kind of taken us by heart. And, and with that, their help, we are diving into and talking to people and trying to understand the customer experience as much as we can. And we are <clears throat> learning a lot. And uh, among others, I kind of want to give you a little bit insight into a few of the insights here, uh, still a few minutes. Uh, one of them is that actually walking in homes, you, don't, you think you walk a lot, but actually you don't walk a lot. Uh, you move around. You shuffle. <laughs> so we have to come out with something that can uh, uh, cater to that. Uh, other thing is, obviously, you can see that there's a crutch here, uh, or crutches, and sometimes crutch can be a crutch. So in this case, we have to have somehow the ability to, uh, to wa work around that. So we are working on things like balancing and other things. Um, maybe not to get away from the crutch right away, but hopefully at least um, somehow. The other thing is that we think always reaching high is great, but you have to remember wheelchair users, they need to reach low because their whole home is catered around reaching low. And, uh, and then also we understood very early on that we are going to become a part of a rehabilitation process. So it's more almost about the process and understanding that than the product. And, um, <clears throat> and then people in wheelchairs, they are probably one of the most organized individuals I know. Because you don't, you, you take a lot of time to get ready and to get about your day. So we have to make sure that we, we fit into that landscape. And finally, but not least, you see a huge opportunity with uh, devices like EXO to the ability to stand up and, uh, and just get your circulation going. And um, so that can reduce a lot of all kind of complications that comes with sitting in a wheelchair all day long. So with that said, we are armoring ourselves for the next stage, for the next step, and um, which is to change many people's lives.
about 70 million uh, is our estimation around the world. And, um, and there is so much we can do as a small company, but we need to focus and we need to make sure that we use our resources well because there is just so much at stake and we can't simply fail. Thank you very much.